Good morning. Oh, Lucy's joining us here, Stanley, and it's is today Christmas. No, today is the twenty third. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. For some reason in my head, it's because we're doing our worship service tomorrow night. So tomorrow, of course, it's Christmas Eve is when we do our big worship service. But um, today is the day before the big worship service, so it's Christmas Eve Eve, and it's been feeling like Christmas Eve all week. That this today. Anyway, I watched the weather this morning. I think I did make the right choice of not having an outdoor service tomorrow. It's going to start out really cold with wind chills in the 20s. So even though it's going to warm up, it's going to be in the 50s. Now, it's low. they've lowered the temperature back from 60 to about 55 to 56. But still with 19 mile an hour winds from the west northwest, which means cold. So I have a feeling that the wind chill is going to be in the 30s. Or at least low 40s. And if the wind's blowing hard, yeah. I remember, I was thinking one day about, because this has been on my mind, how can we do this worship service? And should we do this worship service? And being cold and not being prepared for it. I remember when we, my family moved to Japan in 1975. And um, we were there for a little over a year. year and we moved in June. My dad moved in May. We moved, the rest of us moved in June of 75. And we were there until August of 76. My dad was there with Phillips Petroleum Company who was building a, a super tanker. A lot of people ask, why, why is there oil? There's no oil in Japan, and there's not, but they do build ships. And they built the ship called the Phillips America. They were supposed to, they're planned on, um, I think initially it was gonna be three ships. I remember it's been a long time since I thought about this. Three ships or maybe two, but we thought we were going to be there, I think maybe six to nine years. We ended up, or maybe, maybe we are going to be there three years. Maybe that's what it was. But, um, but then they ended up only um, building one super tanker. And um, the Phillips America is what it was called. And then it turned out that Phillips didn't even hardly use it. They rented it out to other, for other companies to use. It was scrapped a number of years ago. Well, it's cool. I went to, when, I'd never been to Bartlesville, Oklahoma, which was for a long time the, the headquarters of Phillips. And um, they're in Houston now but since they merged with Conoco. But um, I went there and they had a museum and there was a model of the Phillips America there. And I thought, wow. Oh, that's so cool. My dad was the only Phillips employee. Well, there, I think there was another one. He had a boss for a while, but he turned out to be a, a loser, and they fired him. <laughs> My dad did not enjoy working for him, and um, I think it was kind of a surprise to him that they put somebody uh, ahead of him. Uh, anyway, so after after they fired the other guy, it turned out to be a not so nice. Um, his life just got better. <laughs> And um, anyway, so dad, dad was basically the only Phillips employee. Maybe there was one or two others. I, I don't remember them. Um, so but there, there's this model of a Phillips America in the Bartlesville. And my, and my dad was the only real Phillips employee there. So that was really cool. Um, but anyway, back to Japan. And I just remember in the spring, you know, the Cherry Blossom Festival. It's a big thing in Washington, D.C. But of course, the cherry blossom trees were donated to Washington, to, to the United States, by Japan. And uh, Sakura, 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 na 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 na. I used to be able to sing that in Japanese. I was in the sixth grade then when we lived in Japan. Anyway, um, and that, I guess it was probably in April or something. We had a, the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is all over Japan. And we went to this thing um, somewhere on the island. We lived in Kyushu, which is the island Nagasaki is on. We were, we were in the Nagasaki prefecture. Tokyo is on Honshu, a different island. So we weren't on the same island as Tokyo. But um, <clears throat> we went to a Cherry Blossom Festival and it was cold. And the wind was blowing. And all I've been thinking about is that's what Christmas Eve outdoor service is going to be like tomorrow. It's like that Cherry Blossom Festival. I don't remember much about the Cherry Blossom Festival. I saw some pretty flowers on the trees, but mostly I remember being freezing. <laughs> anyway, we were, you know, we were from Texas. We were from Houston and we weren't really, though, 
the uh, climate in Sasebo, the city where we lived, was similar to Houston. It was right on the coast. It was humid. It got hot in the summer. It didn't get real cold in the winter, but oh my goodness, when that wind blew. And I don't know if you've ever spent a winter in Houston. I swear. Part of it's because we're not prepared for it because it's so moderate most of the time in the winter. But when it gets cold and because of the humidity, it's like the wind just slaps you in your face. It's, it's like, it's so cold. Um, it's just a miserable biting cold. It's, <clears throat> of course, it's not all that often it's like that, but that's what it felt like. Only it was clear blue sky. It was not gray and cloudy. It was clear blue sky when we were at the, in Japan at the Cherry Blossom Festival. Anyway, good memories, I guess. <laughs> of Japan. I really, you know, I was 11 years old um, when we moved over there and 12 when we left. I don't, I have some memories of it, but, you know, I was just going to school. One thing, the, the, we went to an American school there, the, the Department of Defense School, E.J. King School. I don't remember who E.J. King was, but um, the school still exists. They're not in the same building. I think they tore down the old building we were in. Um, but, um, we were there for the bicentennials, 17, 1976, and, um, boy, did the, the Navy base, there's a Navy base there, um, and, um, Jimmy Venturi, if you know Jimmy Venturi, who's a member of St. Mark, he, when he was in the Navy, he went to Sasebo, so he, he, he knew what I was talking about when I talked about Sasebo, but he, um, the Navy being there, they did a fantastic fireworks display for the bicentennial. They might have done that every year on the 4th of July, but we were only there, well, I guess we were there in 75 too, so I don't remember anything, but 76 was really something special. And um, anyway, Stanley is just wanting me to shut up and pay attention to him, but I'm not going to do that because because I need to get to work. There's a cold front coming in and it's going to be really cold this afternoon. Just watch it in case you don't know. Of course, this might be posted after that comes in. <laughs> the way I roll, I, I'll get this done. This is, by the way, the third one this week that's been a morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. So we'll see if I get it posted in the morning or something will come up. I've got to get ready for Christmas Eve service. Get stuff to, for the bulletin for Brenda. Okay, come on. Good boy, Stanley. Lucy's just going to lay right down here at my feet. And she's not going to bother me at all, is she? She's just going to lay down there. She's so sweet. Here is our scripture reading. We're actually going to the Hebrew Bible today, the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, See, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. One who trusts will not panic. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a good message today. Well, if you trust in God, you shouldn't panic. Oh my goodness, we're in such a weird place in this country right now. It's hard not to panic, but I have to rem we have to remember that Jesus is the cornerstone. <coughs> Or God is a cornerstone. I don't think Isaiah really knew who was talking about Jesus. Anyway, here is our reading for Wednesday of week 35 in four minutes. We ended yesterday with emphasis on the tensions of modern life based on inner and outer competitiveness. I give a good many talks on radio and television, and, the, and those in charge seldom compliment me on what I say, but they almost invariably say, why, you hit it on the nose, meaning you stopped at the exact second. And you did it without a manuscript. Wonderful. Not the content, but the timing of the conclusion was the important thing. Tension. Front page head headlines of a large newspaper said, Communion distributed to 10,000 in four minutes. A description of a large religious convention which partook of Holy Communion in exactly four minutes. The description in the article was a compliment to the organizing genius of the, of the man back of this communion precision. 
The fact that 10,000 partook of the communion was not the big thing. It was the timing. We did it faster than anybody else. Tension. Ellen Y. was a child prodigy. Her parents were excessively proud of her and expected her to lead the honor roll. But the child, under this competitive expectancy, began to come down with an infection every time an exa examination was announced. That saved her from the competition and escaped out of it. Tension. The school teacher writes, When I was a child, my parents were too exacting, often using the phrase, What will people think? I took it to heart more seriously than they intended. I thought everybody looked at me and thought, What an awful thing she is. I feared people, and as I grew older, feared that I would fail in all my examinations. Then later, I was always afraid I would lose my job at the end of the year. None of these things happened, of course. At the ashram, I was born into an entirely new person. Now I am thankful for these awful experiences because I feel I understand people's difficulties more than most people do, and am understood better also. All of these represent the competitive pressure. I think about, you know, the worship, that aspect of the communion in four minutes, and so often we are, as worship leaders, as, um, and, you know, this whole thing about whether to have outdoor worship or not. It's like, well, it's going to be too cold or something. Like you know, maybe it will be too cold or too windy. Maybe we'll be glad we didn't do it. Maybe no one would come. But, you know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I wor was worried about the wrong thing. I mean, we're not going to do it. It's too late anyway. But I just think, you know, tr communion and we the mode of communion, uh, whether it's those cups with the, uh, which are kind of cheesy, but you know, it at least allows us to do it. Maybe, maybe I'm focused on the wrong thing sometimes. I remember, I mean, there's been lots of, the, rarely is there, have there been, you know, I haven't really gotten a lot of complaints about my preaching. Maybe that's, maybe my preaching is, um, not deep enough or maybe not convicting enough sometimes, but, um, but most people, it's, it's not when, when most pastors I know who've gotten criticized for preaching, I mean, often I guess it could be content, but often it's the length, you know, <laughs> when you hear people complain about a preacher, often it goes on too long. Nobody ever complains about a short sermon. He doesn't help preach enough. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like, oh my goodness, I didn't preach long enough. Nobody's ever told me, oh, Andy, that sermon was too short. <laughs> I didn't get my money's worth because it was too short. Nobody's ever said that. Anyway, here's our prayer for today. Oh, Father, when we get our eyes on others and what we, th what they think we are, uh, we are under false pressure. I'm going to begin this prayer again. Oh, Father, when we get eyes get our eyes on others and what they think, we are under false pressure. We are bowing at the shrine of herd pressure. The herd is God. Forgive us if we see them instead of you, for you have the last word, not them. Amen. Not they. I wonder if that's the right way to say it. Not they. Amen. That's what he wrote, so I guess it's right. <clears throat> Our affirmation for the day, I am emancipated from herd pressure because I've surrendered to God's pressure. Jesus is Lord.